am CEO of Reliability X, and I'm here with the Reliability Sherpa himself, Ramesh Gulati, and we're here for another random topic. So let's have at it, Ramesh. What do you think? Thank you, George, for inviting me, and I'm ready. All Go. right. You ready? All right. Pick you, up another you, one. You say stop. Stop somewhere. Okay, stop. stop. So we've got a block diagram. So this is about reliability block diagrams. Whew. What the heck is a reliability block diagram? Well, this reliability block diagram is your assets. We want to really calculate the reliability. So we build a block diagram on asset in a small blocks. We take out, see how these components are organized in a series of parallel arrangement. And then we can put those MTBF, MTTR number of those, and we calculate the whole reliability of the asset. So it helped us to calculate the reliability and we can run simulation on those that, hey, if we run 1,000 cycles, 100,000 cycles, what's the reliability is going to be on long term? So it's a very, very useful tool to take the asset and build how the asset functions based on those different components. Are they also in series? or in parallel arrangement. Series kind of reduces your reliability, parallel arrangement improves your reliability. So all the your assets are complex, but again a designer can, based on your requirements on reliability, can design accordingly. So it really, it helps to build or calculate the reliability of your whole asset as well in long term, what's going, how it's going to operate. All right, I love everything you just said. Uh, two major points that I always like to kind of bring up. One is the, the reliability block diagram can give you the probability of success over time if you have the right statistics, right? So as Ramesh mentioned, you run simulations and this will tell you if I have a you know an eight hour batch run, what's the probability of one of my assets going down? And as he mentioned, the more you're in series, the lower that the, the lower probability of success and the more you have parallel arrangements, the higher probability of success. This is always evident in manufacturing plants where they've got 50 conveyors in a row That's and they want to know why they're down all the time, right? right? Yeah. But they have no redundancy, no parallel, um, no ability to transfer. Mm -hmm. And so when you start calculating, you know, okay, well, we design it 99% reliability, but I've got 20 conveyors in a row. That's 0.99 raised to the 20. And now suddenly you're in the 80s and 80% reliability, right? And that makes a big difference. That's exactly right. Because again, as you said, conveyors are individual. If they're down, the whole system is down. So that's what series are. The all component in series, if one is down, whole thing is down. In parallel, you can have those in a arrangement. So if one down, other is available. So that's you build the reliability. And that's what you have to do, okay? I remember years ago, I went to uh, a job interview. It was at a major amusement park. And during the interview, they told me that their CEO wants 100% ride reliability. So I looked over at the head of engineering. I said, well, what do you design at? And he said, 94. And I said, well, wait a minute. <laughs> I said, even if you build another one next to it, you're not at 100. You're... All right. So anyway, <laughs> Awesome, Ramesh. So, so thank you so much for sharing your knowledge on reliability block diagrams. Uh, we'll see you next time.